everyone to the Danganronpa podcast, the podcast where we will talk about fruits baskets, symphony gear, attack on Titan, school days, and probably Danganronpa. Tonight I am joined by my friend Odyssey, who is a big fan of Danganronpa and things, and I thought it'd be fun to talk to him about it, and so introduce yourself, Odyssey. Hey, I'm Odyssey, and I'm uh, happy to be here. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's start off with just talking about how you got into the series as a whole, or a franchise, or whatever you want to call it. Let me start off? Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, it's pretty simple. I got into it right when I was starting to get into anime in general, because uh, I discovered it through a YouTuber. I watched uh, the gameplay, I saw the first game, and then I discovered there was an anime for it, and just kind of from there. Yeah, and for me, I actually I think my first exposure to it was someone uploaded an English cover of the opening song that I did not know uh-huh. was in English to begin with. But I really, really? liked it, and that got me interested. Oh, what is this series? And then, yes. I, and then I saw my friend, I knew BB's World was streaming it, so I caught a little bit of that, and it looked kind of cool that I didn't watch too much. Yeah. And then my friend Crimson Assassin was also really into it, so I watched some of his, and he told me like how to play it, like what the order is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then last year I started playing it, and I really liked it, and now I'm doing like 12 videos on the series. It's um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, also, if uh, for people who cannot read the screen, we're basically going to be spoiling all of Danganronpa 1, 2, and 3, and probably Ultra Despair Girls. We're not going to talk about V3 because I have not played it yet. It's kind of like a reboot of the franchise, so it doesn't really fit with the others. So I'll probably, yeah, same here. I'll probably play that before too long, though. Mm-hmm. That's with me. I don't really know anything about it. I've heard it's really good, so I, I'm curious, yeah. but I'm not overly motivated since it's like something different. Yeah, same here. I just need to play the games in general. <laughs> yeah, because you just watch gameplay of them. You haven't actually played them yourself. Yes, but I yeah, I know basically... I, I'm really just fascinated by the series. I go on wikis and I some of the manga. I haven't played the game. It's I've, so weird. I've basically read the entire TV Tropes page on Danganronpa, so I'm kind of an expert now. Nice. And if you if I, you hear me like tabbing out real quick, that's because I'm looking up a character's name on TV tropes because I uh, am very bad at remembering names. Yeah, I feel like with this series, there's like the characters are very iconic that you can yeah. kind of remember most of the names. I remember the ones of the games just because I spent so much time with most of them. Right. Yeah. So there's like Iori, I think it is in Danganronpa too. I always have trouble remembering her name. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to start off kind of going through this in order, though we may bounce around some depending on, like, what things we think of. Uh, so, talk about the first game. The first death was probably one of the more surprising events, if you did not, like, know what to expect. So, mm-hmm. specifically being a, a Sayakas, who was, like, very, uh, like, she was, like, kind of the secondary main character, really there to support Makoto. And then you walk into your room and you see her dead in the bathroom. Was that a like surprise to you, to, or did you think it was like too obvious? There are like lots of death flags. No, I would say it was pretty surprising because I did not know what to expect from the series. And but you, could, if you really think about it, if you like go th- back to the gameplay or something, or you replay it, it, it kind of seems a little bit obvious because though you're in an effed up situation, it, she's like kind of too perfect for you, and it's kind of going too well. So it kind of makes sense that she would be off. Yeah. When I first played yeah. it, I was definitely completely shocked by it, but I also did not like fully know what to expect from the game, like the direction it would go. Yeah, sure. But then I was I I watched my brother play through it, and then I could see all the hints, like, yep, yep, that's completely obvious. And then I was watching our friend Sea Tactics play it, who you have seen on this channel before, and he was going all of like coming up with all these crazy theories that Sayaka was going to try murdering Makoto, and like we were just laughing at him, and then we discovered he was actually pretty close to being right. So that was fun. Yeah, it was. We were actually going to have him show up on the stream and just yell about him being right before I kicked him from the call. <laughs> but sadly, it seems like he was probably busy or something. Um, probably. Yeah. So what did you think of the first uh, murder case? Did you think that was like a good one or is that also like too easy to figure out? Well, I liked it. I, I, I didn't expect it to be Leon. I, I thought it was well done. Yeah. The number thing is like very obvious if you like think about it, but that's only if you're in the mindset of what do you need to think about to figure it out. Right. 
something interesting I saw when like watching videos about it is that the reason they killed off uh, Leon and Sayaka first was because like they were the first characters that were designed and the artists were tired of drawing them and looking at them. Oh, right. I heard something about that. I thought that was just interesting to see. Like, how do they choose, like, how to kill off these characters because they're all, like, so interesting? I was. Uh, so, what, like, what were your favorite uh, trials throughout the game? Were there any that you especially liked or some that you disliked? I wouldn't say there's anything that I disliked. The only thing I'd say I disliked about the trials, but it's not something you can really criticize. They're just sometimes really long. It's yeah. like a lot of... T- it makes sense because there's a lot of tension building, but sometimes the characters are kind of going off in strands. If I had to pick like a favorite, I don't know. The last one and then the first one are probably the best because obviously the first one is just setting everything up. So I thought that was well done. And the last one just kind of wraps everything up. So it's kind of just a one two thing. Yeah. I feel like my favorite trials are all in the second game, which we'll talk about some in a bit. But I mm-hmm. agree with you. I really liked the last one just because of like how much it unveiled and like how you slowly started piecing everything together. Yeah, it was, that was interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, I agree with what you were saying too about like the trials being too long. I feel like the game itself had that issue. Like they'd have these like sort of like pointless dialogues where it's like, okay, you're just being uh, stupid for the sake of it. I just let you like cut out some of the dialogue and you wouldn't be missing it. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's like they could have cut a 30-hour game into like a 20 or 25-hour, and I don't think they would have lost anything. Yeah, I would yeah, say so. Maybe some of the charm, but I think the charm would still be there. Yeah. There's definitely enough like to flesh out all the characters to like show like enough to like explore their quirks without them just going back to the same jokes like 12 times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say so as well. So what were your favorite characters in the game or like any you disliked, any that you're happy to see die? Um I mean the only one I'd be happy to see die I wouldn't say any one particular, but I mean I mean Junko she's like the worst, but uh, my favorite characters, I could just I'm just gonna name off male and female. Okay. For male, probably Gundam, because he's great. Okay, well, I was um, talking more just like for the first game, but I agree, Gundam okay. is great. First game, um, it might, be a, but bo- it might be a bit boring, but I liked Makoto. I think I thought he was a pretty interesting protagonist. Yeah, he was like, kind of cliche, but I never can complain about a protagonist like Makoto. Yeah, but there was also a bunch of other male, character, male uh, characters that were good. Uh, the guy who screams a lot, who was like a general, I don't remember his name. I th- oh. thought he was funny. Mondo, or? It might be. He has the white suit. That for the first game? Or are he filming? No. Oh, Taka. Taka, yeah. The guy who like <laughs> always followed the rules. He was funny. Uh, for a female, I gotta go with Kyoko. She, the ultimate detective. She kind of just kind of solves it all throughout yeah. the whole game. There's also many others, like Aoi. She's great. Oh, yeah. Um, Aoi, Aoi, however I pronounce her name. Yeah, she's my yeah. favorite female character, at least of this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also have a soft spot uh, for uh, Chiaki, or is it Chiaki or Chihiro on this one? Chihiro, I think. Which one but, is that again? Uh, the Trap. Oh, yeah. See how he, she, whatever... <laughs> always um like crying yeah like, but so random it is, i kind of wish they toned it down a little bit but i still like that type of characters like very weak but they want to get stronger and they're working toward it right. so that's i definitely admire him trying to do that and it's a shame that he was killed when he was but i also yeah. relate to him since i'm also a computer programmer so ultimate programmer has to be the best character <laughs> yeah Granted, I'm not a good enough programmer to make an AI that would actually, like, save everyone. And I actually did think that was really cool how, like, a lot of the characters who are murdered still ended up having an impact and helping the characters through some other way. Uh, like, you uh, have uh, Sayaka, like, leaving the message to help them catch Leon. You have uh, Chihiro uh, right, or making uh, Ultra Ego, that was his name, and how Ultra Ego helped them all throughout it, even saving Makoto in Chapter 5. Yeah. 
Or, oh, and Sakura destroying the door to the headmaster's office so they could get in. Right. That, uh, I remember that now. It was a cool moment. Mm-hmm. Sakura's awesome. Sakura's also one of my favorites. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Actually, Lee, you mentioned Junko, so that made me write Junko down because, like, she's alone deserves us talking about her. No. Crazy. <laughs> she is such an insane villain. Probably one of my favorite villains I've ever seen. Yeah, especially in anime. I mean, I've seen a you know a good amount, and I haven't seen any really like crazy villains yet. She she's probably my favorite so far. I was kind of disappointed that like after playing the first game, I was like, oh, she's a wonderful villain, but we only really saw her during the final chapter. Yeah, but it's cool in the anime. You get to see more of her, I guess. Yeah, that's why I love the despair arc so much, which we'll get to that more later. But yeah, I loved every scene she was in in that one. Uh, for sure. What did you think so, with like the twist being that Junko was the villain all along? I thought that was fa- I thought that was actually really fascinating. I mean, you see that sometimes in games where they do a fake out death. In this game, it was more I mean, it was more thoughtful because twin sister uh, Mukuro, who's also great. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was just it tricked me for sure. I was like, damn, back. Right. Yeah, it's like, you would not, you didn't really think that much of Junko. You thought, oh, that was just like a throwaway filler character. But then you, if yeah. you like play it again or rewatch it, you realize everything that Mukuro is saying as Junko, like you can see like she's trying to fake it or like how she's really feeling doesn't fit how Junko would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and plus you have a Junko like uh, manipulating events so that she would have an excuse to kill Mukuro like that. Exactly. A weird relationship. Yeah, I'm glad my siblings don't uh, try to kill me like that. At least they haven't yeah. yet, that I know of. And they're both murders. One's an ultimate soldier, and one's the ultimate echo. Yeah, and like the ultimate soldier is the least dangerous of the two. Exactly, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts on the ending of the game too? Because they had like kept so much as a mystery until the very end. Yeah, I thought it was really cool that they just kind of spilled most of it out. Um, especially like like the last like the last shot of the game where they're all about to enter outside. Yeah, it was really cool. I remember that scene being really remarkable in the anime. I'm sure it was in a game too, but I saw the anime more recently. It's like how is mm-hmm. capturing all the ideas of hope and then going and out to the world that they're going to face it now. Yeah, that was just a really, I guess. It's hard to say, but I guess hype? I don't know. Yeah. Explained. Just excited to see what happens next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely liked the ending. I was a little bit let down after the first game because there was like so much we only got vaguely answered. But then that was right. fixed with the second game and then the anime for Danganronpa 3. So, uh, remind me, did you start off with the, uh, watching the gameplay or watching the anime? Uh, I started off with the first game, game, the first game, and then I watched the anime for it, and then the and then the the anime after the first anime, which is not, which does not have a game. Okay. So yeah, you're kind. Of... So when you watched the anime for it, what did you think about it? I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought. There were a lot of differences, of course, and also similarities, but I I honestly, I know it gets a lot of shit. I honestly thought it was pretty enjoyable. Yeah, that's, I don't know if you saw my video on it. Uh, Everyone watching, go check out that video. Uh, But yeah, I like the anime quite a lot. I don't think I would have liked it unless I played the game beforehand. Uh Huh? But it was like, Uh, yeah, it's like, if you know the events, then they come across better in the anime form than the game, for the most part. Hmm. A little bit more naturally. Yeah, and there's just like some events that were really emotionally powerful that it, the game just could not pull off like that. Yeah, uh, definitely. So, one sort of weird thing with the anime though is like how different the dub cast was for many of the characters. Yeah, I didn't notice that until very recently when you were mentioning it to me because I thought most of them were the same, but then I back to listen. 
Yeah. It's very different. Yeah, it's like, I think Gatlin and Kodo is the same in, like, some of the other cast, but the most obvious difference was Monokuma. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure why. Maybe there was something with licensing, but... Yeah, it was like they couldn't I mean, get the voice actor for an anime, but they could for the game. I don't, I'm not sure. I thought they were both They both did fine, but definitely the game Monokuma's voice is it's more memorable. Yeah, it feels more iconic. It felt like the anime version is, like not taking it as seriously and, like, playing around more with the dialogue, which I ended up really liking. It was a nice touch, though it was definitely different. Yeah, I agree. And, um, yeah, there wasn't that much to say about the first anime, unless there's something you want to, else you want to say about that, or the first game. Um, oh, but, uh, the dub, uh, I thought the, the goes uh voice actress both i thought they both i think for the dub i enjoyed a little bit better it's like she talks it's so weird the, the, uh, kyoko or i'm not no, junko oh junko okay you cut off for like half a second yeah junko's oh, weird sorry about that uh, it's she talks like such like a valley girl oh. so much well, in the game, she, like, had two different voice actresses and, like, five different personalities she switched between. Yeah, it was very weird. I I, I kind of like uh, dub for the anime just a bit better. Oh, I actually thought oh, of something. In yeah. the uh, Dangrupa 3 anime, and, like, uh, you basically see her as just, like, one personality all throughout, just a bit weird. Mm-hmm. But then uh, in the game, when you saw her, she had, like, the five different personalities... And I wonder if when she killed her sister, that made her go more insane and why she has so many different personalities. I mean, probably. She, she just... Right, she just... She just... It's more, more... Insane. Yeah. Her character. It's like, in, in the anime, like, the despair arc, she is definitely insane there. It felt like she was more grounded than thinking about the game. She is completely... Like, kind of completely lost it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, other than that, uh, I just want to mention the dev really quick. But yeah, okay. that's all for the first game. Okay, yeah, sorry if I get a sidetracked. I will probably do that a lot. But that's okay. That's what podcasts are for. Exactly. And then moving on to the second game, where I will switch the image around. Hopefully if this works right. Yes, so the second game, Goodbye Despair. It was like structured very similarly to the first and had a lot of similarities, but also like different and a sequel. And it was very weird how they did a sequel to this. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could expect it because the first how the first game ended, but I enjoyed the second game uh, very much. Oh. Yeah, which game uh, did you like better between the two? For me, I don't know. I feel like I think I want to... I just might be a cop-out answer, but I like both equally because they both present different... Uh, things in their own way, and they both have different uh, cons. So I, I wouldn't say which one. I wouldn't say uh, the first or the second game is better than the other. I think they're both kind of on equal ground for me. Okay, yeah, I can respect that. I think I do prefer the second game. It just like felt like a lot of stuff was more refined. But it's like because the first game gave it such a good foundation to st- like start off with. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to fix something with the screen. Uh, All good? Yeah, it's it's fine. Oh, what did you think when Byakuga first showed up there? Oh, that. Though you probably know, you knew the actual reason for it, though. Expecting it? Yeah. I thought it was cool. Um, it's always fun, I guess, to be around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. character. Dang Grandpa uh, just gives me like a ton of questions normally. So like I played the second game, I was like, okay, all these characters I've seen before. Like, why is Biaki there and why is he fat? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. It's like, did he like gain a lot of weight between the games? Is this in the past? And did he go on a big diet when he was like fifteen or something? Maybe. And it was interesting how the I don't know if we ever got the uh, that guy's name. Like, how he was able to, like, embody Byakuya. So, I was like, yeah, I could see Byakuya act, acting like this. 
But when looking back, it's like, actually, no, that's not quite how he would act. Yeah, it's just so weird because, like, like, he's so, like, pompous and, like, so, like, refined, I guess. That's, like, personality, and then he just acts so different. Yeah, he still has, like, that pompous nature, but he also has, like, his own nature, like, wanting to be there and help everyone. Yeah, I, th- I respect him for gaining the weight, I guess. Well, yeah, because that was very, like, weird. And, like, that whole character, too, like, the ultimate uh, disguise guy, and just, like, how like, how he, like, took over other people's lives and, like, how he's also trying to, like, encourage him, like he did for me, try in the despair arc. Yeah, I... I think it's it, it's interesting how Danganronpa likes to do its twists, and I would say they, they, they uh, get it right. Yeah, and then they kill Byakuya off before we get any answers about him, which is even more surprising. Oh yeah, oh. I, I I like I like Byakuya in the in the in the anime. The um, I I like him in the anime also the way he interacts with the characters even though he's not in the anime a lot. And yeah. For the the third the the second anime, not, not the not the first. Okay. Um, yeah. How about when he's like fat? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're the the fake Yakuya. Yeah, the, the the imposter. Right? Yeah, imposter. That's the name. But you Sorry me, about that, but yeah. You make me do a podcast yeah. at eleven thirty, and I can't remember things. We're on different times, man. That's granted, I'm also going to suggest this time, so probably modesty instead. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I uh, when he was uh, the imposter in the anime, I, I thought he had some very cool moments as well, so I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, he was definitely a very standout character. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, yeah, I definitely missed like, getting more of him in the game, but... The way that they did it ended up working out. Though I was definitely surprised that they would kill off a character before explaining anything about them and like not explain it throughout any of that chapter. Yeah. It's only like um, when you get to the final chapter, like chapter five or six, you learn the truth. Hmm. Uh thinking up like the just just it likes to put the it it likes to do these weird endings, I've noticed. Yeah. So I like that. So, what were your like your favorite trials from this game? I do you, but were they again? It's been so long. Okay, first of all, you had uh, Taro Taro killing uh, the imposter. Then you yeah. had uh, Paco killing Mahiru. Then you had the mm-hmm. uh, nurse Mikan killing Sayori and Ibuki. And fourth yeah. was Gundam killing Nekamaru. Then fifth was uh, Chiaki killing Nagito, kind of. Okay. Favorite trial. Okay. I would say... I mean... I want to... I think... He's one of my favorite characters from the second game. I think Mikan, because, like... Might be... Because, like, you never think Mikan... It feels like she would do something like that, but she wouldn't at the same time. Yeah. And she, she... He's like so like fucked up. Oh, I'm sorry, I cursed. Yeah, I, um, it's the internet. I'm, it doesn't bother me. I just don't want your channel to get demonetized. I didn't. It's not monetized to begin with. I have like 400 subscribers. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone, go subscribe to me so I can hit thousand, so I can be monetized, so I can be demonetized because of Odyssey swearing. Okay, but I'll try not to do that again. Um. Uh, how, how she's just so like kind of nervous and scared all the time. I thought I thought that was quite fascinating. Yeah, so, that one's pretty interesting. And I think it especially was because it's like how much it alluded to like what was going on on the outside. Like because it made no sense. Why would returning someone's memories make them be mur- all murdering like that? But then yeah. it's only in the end does everything come together and make sense. Hmm. Yeah. It's weird, man. Now, I have to say my favorite trial was the fifth one when Nagito was killed. Huh? Just because, like, how absurd it was, everything Nagito was doing, and, like, how his plan came together, like, nearly killing all of them. Yeah, uh, she's also crazy. So. Oh. Yeah, Nagito is one of my favorite characters just because, like, how off he is, but, like, sort of makes sense when you consider his life. 
Mm. He's also a great villain. Yeah. Really fascinating as well. Yeah, even though, like, what he was doing, like, it wasn't, like, doing it because he was a villain. He wanted to, like, uh, make sure that all the remnants of despair were wiped out. Yeah. Even if it meant mm-hmm. killing himself in the process. Right. And then how his, like, whole gamut came down to his luck in ensuring that the spy was the one who actually was, would be the one to kill him. Yeah, he, he's very convoluted. I think it's great. Yeah, especially, again, in the anime, uh, he's also very bizarre. Yes, like how he ends up, like, trying to, like, cheat on his exam, and then he makes a doll gigantic. And then, like, he blows up part of the school and gets suspended and then crashes uh, a plane and then is taking a shower and, like, a waterfall. Oh, those... Oh, especially in the school part where they swap bags. He's, like, talking to the camera. He's like, that was fantastic. He's, like, all happy that he blew up a school. <laughs> so crazy. Have you played Ultra Despair Girls or, like, seen gameplay of it? I have seen gameplay of it, but not fully. Okay, well, a small spoiler, but Nagito is in that game, too. Really? Yeah, he is... He is guiding both the good guys and the bad guys. Um, not surprised by him that he would do something like that. Yeah, and well, this that was like when he was in his ultimate despair, which actually is not that different than normal for Nagito. Uh-huh. But like oh, how I'm he... Gonna... Sorry, what was that? I was just gonna say I'm gonna have to watch your your gameplay of the early live streams. Yeah, it's like on my gaming channel, probably. I think so. Yeah, it is. But yeah, that was the that was a very weird game. We'll talk about that a bit more soon, though. I don't want to say too much right now since you haven't played it or seen it. Um, It's all right. (laughs) So, what were your other favorite characters from this game that you haven't talked about yet? Um, Of course, as I mentioned before, Gundam. He's great. Uh, Kumaru is great. Um, uh, who else for the male cast is pretty interesting. Again, Nagito, all pre- all pretty fascinating. But for the female, I've, I've mentioned these before. I find Mikan really fascinating, but I won't call her my favorite. I don't want to say I have a favorite again. <laughs> I like Akane, uh, Echo. They're all everybody's so interesting. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, yeah, the whole cast is great, so it's like it's hard to pick one, especially as you start to really get to know them. Exactly. I feel like my favorite is Chiaki, just like they made her the perfect character to get attracted to. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she was like the smart one trying to guide them through it. Also, gamer and video games are cool because we're doing a podcast about video games. Obviously, we like them. Yeah, of course. Were, were you surprised by the fact that she was a spy from the Future Foundation? Yes and no. I guess when it came, uh, when it came to the moment, it's a surprise. But again, uh, like when when you think about it again, it was like she she was something like that since she because uh, she's you know she just wants to help. Yeah, yeah. The thing that she's, seems weird is like if like we were, were uh, made to think that the Future Foundation was like the enemy. It was like you would think the their spy would be trying to, like, sabotage us, so why would the most helpful person be the spy? Yeah. So that's what threw me off. Like, in Chapter 4, it definitely seemed deluded to, like, okay, Chiaki's up to something. There's more to her than it seems. Right. And I, I, thought, that, I thought that was cool. I thought it was really uh, cool that they did that with her character. And I also like that the reveal that she was a spy didn't, like, change anything that she did or, like, cast it in a negative light. She said, like, she was legitimately trying to help us as best she could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, like, other characters I like were, like, Ibuki, because, like, she's music and extreme and fun, and I'm really sad that she died. Yeah, I completely forgot about her. She's also great. Akane was great just because she's Akane. Um, yeah. I have the picture of, like, most of the cast on screen, so I'm thinking about, like, what characters haven't I talked about. Uh, for the males, I agree. Gundam was great and absurd, and I want more of him. Nekamaru was great, too, like, of the wholesome team manager bringing people together and occasionally yeah. destroying toilets and or walls. Yeah, and, and also um, like Connie's muscles. Oh, yes. 
Uh, economy is great. And though I think it, I like pretty much the entire cast, and like Free Hiko is really interesting when like he lost Pekka, so how he dealt with that, and like him coming to terms and trying to like get along with everyone. Yeah, their relationship is interesting. Yeah. Um, did, uh, if if you don't mind if I ask a question? Oh yeah, go for it. Uh, what do you think when uh, Mikan kept sleeping on Hajime in the nurse office? Um, that was weird. <laughs> and you see his hair? Like the, his hair, like, stick out of his head? I mean, if I had a girl uh, sleeping on top of me, my hair would probably be messed up, too. He's like, tr- no, his, uh, his, uh, his hair is, like, spiking up. It's meant to be, you know, like a, like, he's hard. Oh, yes. And- and then he's like choking to death at the same time. Oh my god! <sighs> yeah, that, I, I would prefer not to be wake, woken up that way. So that could just be me. I think I would agree. As much as I like Mekon, I don't think I'd want that either. Yes, chat. Let me know if you want to wake up to Mekon sleeping on top of you. And I feel like some, most people would. <laughs> All right, we'll ask see if he'd want to be woken up by Mekon being on top of her or top of him. I'm sure he's interesting with his kinks, so. I need to edit that video of the C tactics reactions to Danganronpa. Mm, that's going to be fun. Uh, oh, something else I picked up on that was interesting, like the name uh, Goodbye Despair for this one. It's like how well that fit the entire story, like revealing that they were all ultimate despairs, that this is a plot to get them like not to be ultimate despairs anymore. Huh? So I thought that was yeah. just an interesting way, like foreshadowing the twist in a completely unobvious way. Yeah. Uh, it was a perfect fit uh, as well, the name. What did you think about the fact that they were basically in the computer simulation the entire time? Oh, that threw me for a spin. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because, like, it's kind of, like, absurd that they're, like, on an island. Yeah, it's, like, it's a twist that makes everything make sense, but I did not see it coming in at all. And it's really weird because, like, in the first game, I actually wondered, like, are they in some sort of simulation? Is that why everything's so weird? But because they didn't do it in the first game, I never would have guessed they'd do it in the second one. Yeah, same, same here. So, yeah, I, and... It made a ton of things make sense, like how Monokuma had so much power over everything, how he had like it, or how the factory that made Monokumas could actually be making them, despite them only being stuffed animals. Right. So, yeah, that was cool. Hmm. For sure. Then, how long have we been going? I think half an hour. So, one more question for this, then we'll move on to Dengarapa three. But what were your thoughts okay. when uh, Makoto, Byakuya, and Kyoko showed up at the end? Uh, that was cool. Um, I that kind of gave me. Um, I told you I watched um, a third anime first. Yeah, kind of kind of reminded me of the end a little bit, or scenes when they were all like when they were all kind of together. Right. I was like, I, I thought that was like awesome. I was like, but it was also so confusing. They just came out of nowhere. You're like, what? Yeah, like, how are they here? What are they doing? What's going on? And they're all just like they're talking like suspiciously, like like what's going on? Well, it's like they don't fully trust the characters, right? But then it's also kind of cool to see them again because you're like, oh, it's been so long. Yeah, it's fun to get them back, and it was really cool just like seeing how the two games tied together, considering it was like completely hidden all the way up until that point. Hmm. Yeah. And then you had Junko come back, which she's Junko. She has to come back. It's kind of convoluted how she did, but at the same mm-hmm. time, it's Junko that it has to be her. And she's crazy, man. Exactly. She's going to come back. You can't replace Junko as your villain. Not for a game like this. Oh. No, you can't. Any other thoughts on Dengarampa 2 as a whole? Um... Uh, really good. I really enjoyed it. Yes, now uh, I want to. Now I want to go to a uh, island in the middle of nowhere and relax away from uh, life. 
that that would be really fun right now. All right, let's go. Let's go do that. I'll pick you up. We'll uh, steal an airplane and go do that. All right, bye, podcast. All right, but speaking of stealing an airplane, we are now moving on to Danganronpa three, where a plane crashed. So maybe that's not a good segue. I don't know. I make this uh, stuff, up, stuff up as I go. All right. Think of Danganronpa three. We had like the future arc and despair arc. And what did you think about like the story structure for, for how they did that? Um. I thought when I was first researching how to watch it, which is not complicated how to watch it, but it was kind of weird how you had to watch one episode of Future the Despair. But I got used to it eventually. Yeah. I thought it was unique, I guess. I'm annoyed um, that Funimation did not have that as like the default watch order on their website. Because unless you know how to watch it, you're going to watch it wrong. Yeah, and you're going to be so confused. Like it yeah. could... I think it would work if you watch like all the despair arc and then all the future arc, but it just would not be the same experience. Oh. Yeah. So, I will say they made the cliffhangers really evil, though. Oh yeah. Because like typically cliffhanger, okay, watch the next episode. Here's like cliffhanger, right. go watch like, something completely different and then come back. <laughs> oh. Um. It was, I guess, a little annoying, but not too annoying. Yeah, it it worked for what it was doing, but yeah, I'm going. Yeah. To, I would hurt like other uh, shows if they tried doing that. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Um, sorry, go ahead. That you kind of we can mention later, but did you ever watch? Made like a not like an I guess it's an OVA, but they made like a little special. Thing in Rampa. It was like three minutes, I think. It's, I don't know if you've ever watched it. It's when they're, again, they're also in like a simulation. Like, it starts off normal. Like, everybody, it's like so normal. Uh, it's like uh, Ayaka and Nagito are like going to school. I think I've heard it's of it. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I should go do that. It's on YouTube. Uh, I think you could watch it. It's sub though. There's no dub for it, unfortunately. But yeah, it's not too long. I was, it's just kind of like its own little side thing. Okay. I'm just wondering if you've seen it. I saw. I think I saw it in my suggested videos at some point. Oh um, yeah. I was just, just you just made me remember that, and I was like, huh. All right. Maybe yeah. we're gonna have to go watch this after the podcast. Maybe. Um. Yes. Maybe. Back to Oasis then. So, uh, what did you think about all the new characters that they introduced for the future arc? I uh, thought that was actually really interesting. Uh, it's like no one you've seen, I guess, because, again, I didn't watch the gameplay for the second game, but I knew what they looked like just from promotional art. Oh, uh, well, I, was I, talking about the, I was just talking about the future arc, the one with the new killing game and uh, Makoto and no, everything. No, no, no. Oh, I, I, I know that, but I was just saying because, like, I did not – I only recognized people from the first game. I knew who the second people came – I knew the people from the second game. I thought they were going to be in that. Oh, okay. And just threw me for a loop. And then you just have like a completely sense. new cast for all the side characters. Yeah. yeah. So the, yeah, I, I yeah I was confused at first. Not really confused. I thought it was interesting that they would introduce a new, another new set of characters. Yeah, for like a twelve episode anime, like half the cast being completely new. It definitely threw me off for a bit because, like, I didn't know them. I didn't really care about them. Characters are dying. I didn't know. But then when we got like their backstories from the despair arc, that definitely helped fill in a, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So I do feel like yeah. the new cast was probably the least memorable. But that's only because like they only have one anime as opposed to like one or two games. Uh, they all did their thing. I guess we. I enjoyed them for the time that I saw them. And like the characters who lived through most of it, I thought were really interesting. Like Mitrai, of course. Hmm. Yeah. Um. And then you just have um, and you have like the the the, the people have uh, Aggie and um. Yoi and Kyoko, the, the people from the first game who survived, they're back and they're and they're surviving again. Yeah, and 
I definitely enjoyed the focus that they got, and I loved how Ioi had to carry Makoto through the halls. Oh my god, that's great. Where she just, like, puts him up like he's nothing and just starts running. <laughs> yeah, I like how they're first trying to run, and, like, you're saying, yeah, I can't. Look, I can't run in halls. And she's like, oh, man. All right, I'm carrying you. Oh, that's great. Um, she, th- That's why she's the best. Kyoko's good, but not as good as her. And it's like, like now that I think about it, I love Kyoko. I love AOA. They, they might be, if I really think about it, neck and neck, because they both have many things that are good about them. Um, but if I, did you, uh, what did you think of the scene where um, I thought it was really cool and interesting that the relationship uh, I guess developed more and you could, and you could kind of care about them. One, Kyoko, um, off her glove and holds his hand and hold Niagi's hand. I forgot that that? Was a, but yeah, that that was really good and just like shows how close they are, how much she's like she puts her faith in him completely for this. Yeah. And um, what did you think of them? Actually, no, they did this for both characters. It made it look like they killed them off, but not really. Yeah, I that also threw me for a loop because. Thought she was actually dead. I was like, uh, I was like, Mother of Christ, come on! But then she came back. Yeah, and like Kyoko, well, like Kyoko is like they. That feels like the twist that Dangerampa would do. But just like having a character not really die like that, that feels undangerampa. But at the same time, it's mm-hmm. the only time they really do that, except for all the characters in the second game. So yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it makes sense that the clues that she left. Then when they're talking about like how she came back, I thought it was a little, oh, you know, worse the explanation. But I'm still happy we got her back. Yeah, and they definitely had a lot of foreshadowing. If you like know what to look for, that she wasn't really dead. It, yeah. it also makes sense that she would be the one to figure out a way and like use that pharmacist's uh, drug to do so. Hmm. Which yeah, that it was also interesting how they like developed those like the pharmacist and, like, her friend and the guy, like, they developed them through the despair arc and then, like, gave them a bigger role in the future arc. Mm-hmm. That was... Oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry, go on. Yeah, that was just an interesting way of taking advantage of the story, how the, the story was structured. Yeah. Um, I felt bad for the girl who made the medicine because, like, they used her. Yeah. And, like, her, ang- her... her anger and everything makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> There's one weird dub line from when she's chased when she turns into like that weird monster, uh-huh. and she believe it's like something. It's that couple, the 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 girl with the candy, and then the guy, her boyfriend or something. Yeah, he he says something like "stop in the name of deliciousness." Like, oh my god, this dub. Oh yeah, the dub for Dang Rampa Three is amazing. It's honestly one of my favorite dubs I've ever heard. Uh, oh, good. Do you remember that line? Not that I line, gotta, but there are lots of lines to remember. No, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find that clip for you. <sighs> yeah, the dub was just—it was really good. It was like a lot of absurd lines, but I feel like they fit the personalities of these characters because all the characters are like completely ridiculous too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, if you watch the stu- sub, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um. D- the dub is better. Yes, by far. I, now I want to go watch dub clips again instead of doing the podcast. Oh, we can do that soon. <laughs> yes. So, what are your thoughts on how the despair arc was like? It was like completely prequel to the second game. I that. I thought that was really kind of like again it really surprised me and just put my head around especially when they're explaining it during the end how everything led up to like the first game yeah the second game and I was like what the hell yeah, I... and hey keep going it's cool no it was just really cool though how I thought they did it in my opinion yeah I agree like 
like you watched the Danganronpa three before you saw the second game, and like I knew st- structure of what it was doing. Like it was leading up to the games, shows how to start off normal, how they get there, and it was really good. The issue I had with like both games to a point is like they don't really explain a lot in detail of what happens. You just get like vague explanations, but here we actually oh. saw like every single event. Uh, the the murder that we saw in the flashback game. Uh, you saw the student council killing everyone. You saw how oh Junko like manipulated everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the scene with the student council that was amazing. That was, that was nuts. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, Murkrow singing too. Like, why? I crazy. Yeah, she's like singing like opera and everybody's murdering each other. It's so dark, but it's so well done. It's so twisted, yeah. Ah, uh, Junko's insane. Yeah, Junko's one of the best villains ever by far. Yeah. Oh my god. And like how she met like uh, Azuru and uh, like how that ties into that. And like how she brainwashed all the other uh, students in the class by killing by killing uh, Chiaki. Yeah. That, oh my god. That that scene as well was also uh, yeah. really messed up. Especially like you know she's gonna die because like she has to, but like you keep having hope maybe she'll, she'll find a way out. But no. Exactly. She just keeps like crawling, and then she just keeps getting like stabbed and like shot, and like. And they do that to like the most wholesome character in the cast. No, I mean, you show her, like, waiting for um, Hajime, like, outside. Like, yeah. Like, going turns evil. Like, she's just trying to, she just likes him. She just wants to spend time with him in game. Uh-huh. And I love the different ideas they explore, like, the people who are the Ultimates versus all the other more normal people and, like, all the conflict there. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's great. Yeah, I definitely enjoy the Despair arc more than the Future, but the Future arc was still enjoyable. Yeah, Future arc was solid. Despair arc is like the Dangrapa at its best, though. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It, it very nicely structured in the way it's done. And the teacher is the best. Oh, yeah. It, I love the twist that she was an ultimate despair like throughout all of the Future arc and everything she set up. And because mm-hmm. of the way it's structured, you don't know that until you're near the end of both the series or both arcs. Yeah. That was really cool. You you don't expect it because she's like so wholesome and she's like, I love you kids. Yeah, and like I was watched the first episode of this with C and like he was saying like, oh, the teacher's amazing. I want her as a, my teacher. It's like, yeah, you're going to enjoy this series. Yeah. <laughs> like the scene where she comes back from somewhere and do you remember when they're all celebrating? And um, go- <laughs> I love Gundam. It's a panty child of all, saying, of all of them saying, like, welcome back. And he's like, ma'am. And he's like, doing the salute. Yes. And I think I showed you this clip, but just so the one where Gundam brought a bear to class. Oh my God. That. And, uh, and uh, I believe. What's the girl with the red hair's name? The one who takes photography? Yeah, her. Uh, Mahiru? Yeah, she's like being so rational. And she's like. <laughs> There's a bear in the classroom. Yeah, I was like, why? I feel like she's like the one logical character in that show. Exactly. Oh my god. And then there's the aphrodisiac scene. Oh, yes. That was <laughs> that was terrible. And by that, oh I'd be wonderful. Oh my god. And then, dude, Mikon's line. She She's caressing Peko Yama's sword and she's like, just the tip. That's enough. Yeah, and it definitely implies, like, between that and the second game, how, like, Mikan fell for Junko. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's so many scenes with Mikan and Junko, and she's, like, tied up with um, a gaming mouse. And she's, oh. like, and then she's, and she, like, cat crawls towards um, the, the, the guy who does anime art. Yeah. She's, like, Mita- what's his name? Mi- Mitari? Wait. Mitari. So. Mitari. Mitari. I wrote it down, but I could not figure out how to pronounce it. My brain stopped working. Yeah, I looked up his name now. Yeah, I think, yeah, Mitari. No, Mitari, I think. It... I thought it was Mitari from how they pronounced it. I'm just going to say Mitari because it's a little bit easier. Okay, go for but it. When she's like, when the, but when she's like, she, the fans of her shot, when she's like leaning up against him. Yeah, like she's trying to seduce him. Yeah, it's, it's insane. And then there's another scene with Mikan. <laughs> Uh, Byakuya is there, 
and she, uh, it's when she puts um, Mitari uh, inside bed because he like passed out from working too much. Uh-huh. She's about to, and she's like, she's like, oh, because he grabs her to help, uh, help fix him because she's the ultimate nurse. Yeah, so like she she's comes like, there oh, to I'm help. Gonna... Yeah, and then she's about to like strip because she's like, oh, you need to like blackmail me, and he's like, no, stop. <laughs> And wait, when there's a scene when the uh, the imposter like kidnaps her, she makes a line of saying, "Is this going to turn to like an a, a, like late night uh, drama?" That, that's the scene that I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Or well, just like the entire scene, like everything, all the weird lines. Yeah, that, that that's what I meant. I just don't remember the exact same line, but yeah, that 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 was great. That that scene was ah, oh, funny. Oh my god! And then it's just so good because like and it's also wholesome, like when they're all gaming. Oh then... yeah, and I want to bring this up later, but it's like how they show the power of video games, to like bring people together. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. And... Just... yeah. I love the scene, like they were playing Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, or like lots of games like that. Like you could tell what they're referencing. Hmm. That that was fun. Yes, it was great. And... Wow. I also uh, found it like, very interesting how like they were showing like the power of anime, but in a negative light. Yeah, that was interesting. Like how it was the anime that was able to like brainwash the ultimate despairs in the world, and also like try to bring them hope, and like it shows the danger of like using anime or like storytelling as a whole to like to like, get your message across in a way that is brainwashing. Yeah, because I feel like the anime was kind of um like. Of fourth wall breaking itself because not that Dan- Danganronpa is brainwashing, but the same thing. Like Danganronpa shows all this dark stuff. Yes, yeah. audience. So it feels like they're kind of playing off themselves. Yeah, and like they made the comment when like uh, Junka first saw uh, me try his uh, anime. Like she felt like, oh, you really got an emotional reaction out of me. And like his kind of comment, yeah, like know how to direct people's eyes, their emotions. And then the show's using the same tricks on us as the viewers. Like, okay, we're going to show you some things. We're going to add the right music. We can use this animation style to, like, really get the emotions across. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was great. It was. Uh, what else? Uh, um, um, we have, like, like four more questions. Like yeah, so it's like, okay, so going back to the, I just want to see if there's anything else for the Despair arc. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Junko's voice acting was amazing here. So was the rest uh, of the cast. That was great. So what do you think, think about, was... like, Junko taking over the show, like, halfway through the arc? And it's Jun- I mean, it's Junko, man. I mean, I, I thought it was great. And it's just crazy because it's like, it's like, starts off as like, um, Kind of slice of lifey. Yeah, I'm talking about the despair arc, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. It starts off like all slice of life, wholesomeness, and then just like gets left, and everything just like slowly starts just worse and worse. Yeah, and like Junko just I, shows up and causes everything to fall apart. Yeah, but it's so cool just seeing how it just kind of just top, it just how it kind of just tumbles down. Like how he it got just, and how they were able to like justify the crazy events of the game. Hmm. Yeah. And and there's another great scene in the despair arc where um, remember when she, uh, Junko picks up Mukuro and goes like trying to stab her, she's like avoiding it with like all these karate moves. Yeah, like that's they they first meet up for a long time after like a like they haven't seen each other there forever. So Junko just tries killing her sister. Mukuro blocks it because she's a soldier. Of course she does. Yeah, and then. Mukuro is like supposed to be in love with Junko in the in the in the anime. Like it's like hinted at, like she has like feelings for her, something like that. It's weird and twisted. I didn't get that too much, but there's definitely a weird relationship between the two of them. Not, not like in love, but it seemed like she had some weird a Mikon. Like how Mikon like gets off by it. Oh yeah, it feels like it feels like Mukuro. It was the same where well, she was like getting off from Junko being like, like trying to kill her and just making her do things. And it was like the line where um, I think it's when they find Izuru, 
like Jinka makes a comment like saying uh, fat, ugly, stupid people shouldn't be talking. And then Mukra's like, fat, ugly, stupid? Yep, that's me. Oh my god, that was great. Yeah, definitely the Sparrow was the best. Uh, going back yeah. to the future arc, since we were like almost up to an hour. How, uh, yeah. Did the, what did you think of like how different the killing game was here than the uh, first two games? Yeah, it, it, it was quite different because um, there was no game for uh, the, the anime. So it was weird how they did it because it was like, like a, just like a battle, like a royale. Like everybody was just like, each other. Yeah, like it was Plus much. It, it was much more action focused too, which would not have worked at all in the game format. At least not how Danganronpa normally is. Oh, uh, it would have to be like a whole completely different game, and it it probably would fail to be honest. Well, that's kind of what they did for Ultra Despair Girls, because that was like an action uh, third person shooter. Uh, but that wasn't like you know, like, it wasn't like a killing game where you had to. Yeah. Uh, you, had to, you know, there's a bunch of people and. That's it, you know. Yeah, that one is basically the kids were throwing tons of monokumas at uh, Kamaro in uh, Toko, and they had to fight their way through them. Yeah, so I mean, it makes sense for that game, but um, I thought it was a, a different thing that they did for the future arc. But again, I enjoyed it. It's just like it's like kind of like so absurd, but cool at the same time. How guy with the katana, like he has like a robot eye at one point, and he's like about to like Miyagi. Yeah. It's, like, crazy. It was definitely, like, absurd and ridiculous, but so is Dang Romp as a whole, so it fit. Yeah, and then, like, when the old men and him were, like, fighting, old men was, like, doing, like, super ninja moves. It, it, it was really cool. I would not expect the characters to be, like, that good at fighting, except for, like, maybe the boxer. Yeah. What did, uh, you think? think of the guy who was like protecting uh kyoko the guy with the, the hat and blonde hair he had a- yeah that guy i really liked him he was like a cool laid back still trying to help out the characters and he worked for uh kyoko's dad yeah so like, the- he, yeah. like how he made the promise and then he like uh the headmaster saying if anything happens to you i want her i want you to take care of my daughter and he made this comment all right i'll marry her and then it's like okay i'm living forever now so you don't do that right that was that was <laughs> funny yeah, i thought it was just so cool that like to mention really quick because i know we were on a time thing here uh, that Oko's dad was like very important to the story yeah too, for like the first game mm-hmm. and it's definitely so I, it fills yeah. up the world a lot more and that kind of made me like really like Kyoko. Just when that happened, I was like, really cool. Yeah, like how much like she means to her father, and by extension, the uh, guy. And her whole like family line in general, because I've done a lot of research about her, her character, and like her different stories that she's been in. How like she has like, a whole like light novel. I think I've read part of it. Just, oh, like, online. okay. Yeah, that that it's would like, definitely be it's interesting. Like, it's like about her backstory, I believe. Uh-huh. But. Anyways, we should get back to the yeah. arc. So, what were your thoughts on like the mastermind's plan, which was to get Mitra to basically brainwash the world with his uh, hope anime? That was again unexpected. Like, yeah, huh? It it definitely it's... felt like very convoluted, and I kind of mm-hmm. didn't like it because I like, well, if you want to get the anime out there, just like broadcast it yourself. Why does he have to do it? Like. Yes, it's on his phone, but it's like steal his phone. It's yes, technically you shouldn't steal people's phones, but you also should not try killing everyone. Right. I I, th- I thought it was also weird that like Mitari was there and he was like freaking out and he was like. Well, apparently was... he wasn't supposed to be there. That was not according to plan. Yeah. It was like he was kind of like there last minute, so they had to like adjust his strategy and hope that mm-hmm. Mitari wasn't killed halfway through it. Yeah, and he was like freaking out, and he was like, "Oh, he was like cr- crying." And it was like, "It was." And yeah, he has the same it, voice actor as a Deku in My Hero Academia. If you, I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, I did not. I have not even watched uh, My Hero yet. Oh, okay, but that was a perfect uh, casting for a character like that. Yeah, it, it kind of is because I, I, even though I haven't watched My Hero, I kind of know about the powers and you know some of the characters it's just kind of a weird contrast because Deku is like happy and like bubbly and all that and 
I mean, Tari is kind of like that at first. Like, he's happy. It'll be working on anime. It's all wholesome. Yeah. Deku. But then he just kind of goes into despair. And he starts, like, worse and worse. Well, it's like, the way that he, uh, the voice actor played them both is, like, if Deku was going through, like, the situation with him being overwhelmed and thrown completely in over his head, that's how he would sound. Oh, okay. Yeah, see? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so, like, that's... I mean, I like Deku so much, so just a see a voice actor makes me like a character more. Hey, that's, uh, I know it's your favorite anime, so yeah, that's more all, power to you. That's also part of the reason I like Handshakers, but that's a topic for another video. <laughs> not watched it. I would not recommend it, but it's a good anime, despite what some people say. I've, I've, I've heard <laughs> a lot about it. Uh, yes, I'm sure you've seen many videos. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so what did you think of that, uh, the plan to, like, use his video to brainwash the world? All right, yeah, sorry for going on a little side. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, again, I mean, was it, the only reason, I mean, it was unexpected, but not at the same time, because in the despair arc, like, that's what, like, Junko was trying to do, you know, trying to release it all and brainwash people, so kind of just used kind of the same tactic to release his stuff out there. Yeah. It was kind of this, it was kind of similar. It wasn't as big as a surprise, but I still enjoyed it. And I think it definitely worked well because like having the two arcs go together, it's like you don't learn about his anime to brainwash people into despair until only a few episodes before you see that he has his anime that can do the opposite now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for, it's- for sure. And I also like how him trying to spread hope that way is like they portray him as a villain, though, in the end. Mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, Hajime, like, talks him down. Yeah. That was, that, was, that was a cool scene. It was, like, right in the last episode, I believe. So, yeah, that was the hope arc, which was the final episode. Yeah, that, that was cool. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing the characters in the second game, like, come back and use their powers to, like, fight. Yeah. That that was really cool, and then you get like the Ultra Despair Girls stuff, like they're they're like shooting Monokumas and episode seven, the most absurd uh, episode of an absurd anime. Oh, and then like Toko's freaking out with her tongue and her scissors, and there's uh, uh what's her name, Monica? Yeah, Monica. Oh, like, and then she's like in this, so she goes to space. Yeah, it's like okay. So if you don't know the, that's basically like. What happened in Ultra Despair Girls, Monica and the other kids were basically taking over the city, killing all the adults. So Toko and Kamaru fought against them, eventually defeated them, though they, uh, Monica got away. And so, and, and so like this picks up from there, they need to go after Monica. I forget the exact reason for it here. But they do, and then Monica's like, you know, I'm tired of being a villain. I quit. That was great. And, you know, SC was right. Lollies are bad. I mean, all the villains in Ultra Despair Girls are lollies, or shotas. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not surprised they didn't that. I mean, they kind of did it before. Yeah, I mean, oh. what other sh- uh, series would have, like, elementary school kids be your big villain? I don't know. It's Danganronpa. Granted, they were manipulated by Nagito, but still. I... And that Nagito, he's nuts. <laughs> yes. And uh, Junko, kind of. Mm-hmm. If you ever played uh, Ultra Despair Girls, watch the after credit scene. Okay, sure. It will make everything make sense, surprisingly. I. Oh, and then, and then, and then Byakuya is like in a plane. It's like he's like he's controlling it all. It's like a whole like secret service around him. Oh well, that's just Future Foundation. Right, I thought, yeah, the Future Foundation, but, like, the scenes that he was in, really cool, especially yeah. when he, especially when Toko's, like, imagining um, being with him. Yeah, like, he sees him, like, kids. okay, someone's uh, talking, or someone's thinking about me. And he's like, and the whole scene's just absurd, like, let's have a thousand kids. Yeah, Toko is uh, very special. Yeah, and then and remember, uh, who's the guy with the braids? He's, like, waiting outside. Yeah, Shihiro, yes. He's, like, trying to not get shot by helicopters. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, he's so glad when Byakuya shows up. Oh, yeah, that was great. 
Uh, this this show and series is amazing. No. Oh, that's I, great. I think I've gotten to all through the topics I came up with in like five minutes. So anything else about Dangrampa 3 or the entire series or anything else? Um, Dangrampa is cool. I recommend it. Very fun. Go check out my yeah. gameplay. I think I streamed all three games, so you can go watch those and see me react to things and be completely surprised. Yeah. Along with mm-hmm. staying up way too late to play it. And I stay and I stay up too late watching it. Yeah, there. What was it? I think it was the first trial, of the second game. I like started playing around like 10 p.m. I tend to go to bed around like 11 p.m. to midnight. So I'm like, I'll play for an hour. I didn't go to bed until like 1.30 that night. Uh, and I had work in the morning. Mm-hmm. But I don't have work in the morning tonight, so that's good. Otherwise, this would probably be a bad idea. That's good. Yep. So. Hey, well, uh, any other comments you had? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Trumpa. Fun series. Uh, you, I I don't know why I'm doing your job for you, but if you want to talk about it in the comments, a conversation, that'd be cool. Yep, I love talking to people about this. That's why I made Odyssey join me for this. I was happy to. So, um, so Odyssey, do you have any social medias that I, that you want to promote? Not at the moment. No, I'm still trying <laughs> to my YouTube channel, even though I've said that like what months ago. All right, so check out his YouTube channel and go get him a million subscribers so he can be more famous than PewDiePie. I think that's possible, but... All right, we, we believe in you. Thank you. All right, so thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Didn't have too many people check out the live uh, show, but that's probably because it's, like, really late and it's hanging around us and not all that popular. But thank you for people who are checking this out afterwards. Uh, we hope you enjoyed us uh, rambling about this. Check out the rest of my Jang Opera videos, which are quite a few, both on my this channel and my gaming one. And I'll definitely be streaming V3 at some point in the future. All right, so.